Welcome back to The Bitter End. It's Try Before We Die night. It's whiskey night. Clearly, Mal's still not here, and we know why. And if you look around the world, you'll see here and there reports of things getting better, and I'm not one to disagree. But if we were going 100 miles an hour in the car, and we put the brakes on, and we got it down to 20, that doesn't mean you put it in park and jump out. we got to play this out to the end, so we stay safe. So, Mal's not here. Um, we miss him. We look forward to seeing him again. There's his Coke. Some of you might have noticed, those of you who know me, that it's the middle of April, getting to be the third week, and I still got my beard on. Now, I make maple syrup, and at the end of sugaring season, when I close the sugar house, I shave my beard. Well, sugar house is closed, sugar's put away, trees aren't tacked anymore, and I still got my beard. Well, this year I decided that I was gonna just go with the quarantine beard and we're just gonna see how long it gets. Man, we'll be here for a while if it gets to here at least another two weeks, because I grow a beard. So it's whiskey night and uh, I'm excited to try, try a glass. I'm not sure what it's gonna be. Um, got a little Swiss cheese, I got some dark chocolate. Started reading a book the other day, Thousand and One Nights. We've got a little time in quarantine. This is just one of 18 volumes, Thousand and One Stories. Glass of whiskey, good story. Kind of goes together, like maybe some chocolate or some cheese, ice or water, you know? Whiskey is meant to go along with things. Ask Offerman, it, it goes along with a fire, a crackling fire and a nice sweater. So, here we are. I got the random.org all generated up, the bottles listed, the numbers ready to press generate. Any questions, Mal? Hmm, I know. Yeah, Mal wants to know why he's not here. Well, I already told you, because it's not safe. We're not allowed to, and that's my rule, and that's his rule, that's our rule. Okay, here we go. Let's see what bottle of whiskey we're drinking tonight. Hmm. Okay, I know where this bottle is, I think. Well, we got 75 behind me. 76, 77, 78, 79, 80. I got my figuring done. 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. And it is not 90. 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97. It is 97. So I gotta get up and get it. Just gonna be a couple steps. It's actually up above the bar. Camera difficulty for just a second there, but it's all right. We're just gonna go with it. Kilkelman, Kilchelman. I can't really tell you about the pronunciation because I don't know it. But we're going to learn a little bit about this bottle. It's the Kilkelman Sanag. Now I know a couple of things about this distillery. At least I think I do. So this is a newer distillery. This is an Isla, um, which probably means that we're gonna have a peaty whiskey tonight. Um, my, my memory, and I'm gonna just look up here and make sure I'm not confusing this with something else. So this is a newer distillery, and their first few releases were actually spirit releases um, because they were generating some money for themselves. And to be a Scotch, it has to age at least three years in Scotland. And so in their first few releases, they released a spirit, a very clear, almost like a moonshine, because it hadn't done the few, um, the three years, the mandatory three year aging. So um, certainly we're not gonna find a 21 year of this yet or anything like that. I believe this is a no age statement. 
Um, so what that tells us is, of course, right, that it's not a 15-year-old or anything like that. So they're not putting an age statement on it. Um, I'm going to guess we're probably in the eight, nine-year range. Um, let's see. Distilled, matured, and bottled, right? Yeah, no kidding. Um, Non-chill filter, natural color. Isla's Farm Distillery. So again, the Isla, uh, spelled is lay, but pronounced Isla, well known for their very smoky, peaty whiskeys. Um, soft cooked fruits with caramel and vanilla on the nose. In the mouth, toffee, peat smoke, and citrus with a lingering sweetness. And its finish is a lovely balance of peat smoke, fruit, and sweetness. So again, that peat is that very traditional when they smoke the barley in the distillery um, as part of their process. That's where that peat comes in. And peat, of course, as you know, is really just sort of an earth and dried clump of grass and mud that has been used traditionally as a fire fuel for thousands of years in Ireland and Scotland and you know other northern territories. Um, and they used it um, in making the Scotch whiskey. And it's um, often considered that traditional flavor of Scotch whiskey. You know, Scotch is smoky, um, especially back in the day. That was really what most people thought of Scotch. So we've got a, uh, a Kilcoman, um, the Senag, um, no age statement, Isla tonight. Never had any of their offerings. Um, we do have another one of their offerings up there. Yeah, just one. Um, so we have two total. Never tried them. I'm excited. I'm glad this isn't middle of summer. These smoky whiskeys aren't necessarily the greatest summer whiskeys, unless you have a cool summer evening. So here we go. Mal, the, the Isla's one of your favorites? No calling. Not one of Mal's favorites, but we've all been surprised. Okay. I wasn't going to say it, but we do this for the cork failure. I think we're going to get a pop. Okay, here we go. Let's see what the cork. Yeah. It's got a lot of that real traditional, what you think of a scotch. This really smells like it. There's the smoke, right? So the initial piece was sort of alcohol. And there really is that campfire smokiness. I'm gonna do it. Kilcom and Senai. Not a lot of burn, not a lot of burn, which is good. It's, they'll claim it's soft and I really will agree with them. It is soft. Okay, so very mild, very mild. In fact, in the front of the mouth, it really did spend some time, and they'll use the word toffee, and, and I'll agree, and maybe some caramel, really on the front end, some rich, sort of some of that darker candy flavor, and as it worked its way back, you began to experience some of the smoke, so I'll tell you, this is not heavily peated, so now, actually, you might like this one, it's really not heavily peated at all. In fact, um, it's not a standout flavor. And let's just see about this next round. Yeah. Really, that, that toffee or that caramel right up in here is the dominant flavor. And that smoke is sort of just in the background, like when the wind blows through the campfire. And now and then, you just get a little bit of that smoke. 
Um, it's really not showing up much at all. So tonight I'm going to um, I'm going to try a piece of that um, that dark chocolate again with something like this because it seems like it would be the good pair rather than the cheese. So we'll just take a just take a piece. It's probably bigger than I need. This is 85% um, cocoa, right? So this, again, not a not a sweet chocolate. This is a sort of a a, a really dry, tobacco-y, aged, woody kind of chocolate. In fact, my wife says it's disgusting. I don't like candy, so I think it's really good. <laughs> Again, that's a good pair. Not as good as the whiskey we paired it with last time because I think the smoke really doesn't work as well with the chocolate. And I got the chocolate here and I've got the smoke in the background there. Now the chocolate matched up really well with that toffee and that caramel, but the smoke in the background really wasn't a good addition. So uh, I would have some more chocolate with that. I would, but um, I'm not calling it a, a, you have to pair it with the chocolate because I don't think the chocolate works super well with the smoke. So that's the Kilkelman Senag. Um, I'm actually, I'm, you know, let's put an ice cube in this real quick. Let's just see what happens. Get a little bit of the water off the ice. Temperature, cool it down. Let's see what just happened right there. Huh. It actually brought out more of the smoke. Interesting. It calmed down the front and opened up the back. I feel like this is going to be one that I would prefer without the ice. So um, that's our bottle of whiskey tonight. We're going to get back to Mal being here soon, but we've got to get the car all the way to zero miles per hour before we put it in park and get out. Stay safe, everyone, and kippus.